Hey, what's happening, Rockdown Detroit Lions fans? It's Will, Rockdown Detroit Lions, Rockdown Podcast Network and Sports Journal. So we're headed to the Detroit Lions joint practice today versus the Jaguars. And, uh, man, we're excited to see what that defense is going to show us today. That's our key for today. Is we're going to try to key in on the defense and see, you know, who's, who's doing what as we're getting closer to this second preseason game. The Lions have been hit by a bug. Uh, it's been kind of going through everybody all week long. And uh, we had a couple of uh, injury scares yesterday that we, we don't really have a timetable on just yet. But St. Brown uh, kind of got rolled over by a couple of Jags after uh, catching the, in the end zone early in practice. And uh, he, was, he was seen running on the sidelines, working with trainers, doing sprints after the injury. So that, that's good news. And that means that this injury is is probably gonna, you know, be a short-lived injury, uh, you know, for the next couple of weeks while we're managing uh, preseason and getting ready for Week One. So I would expect that the Lions are gonna dial St. Brown back. I know that's not how St. Brown works, but in uh, interest of preserving the season, I have a feeling that they're gonna dial him back uh, and make sure that he's fully healthy to go, because he's gonna be the the, the biggest. Uh, reason why we win this Kansas City game and you know, we have quite a few players on this team that uh, are going to be just thrilling to watch and, and you know make a lot of exciting plays but St. Brown is is the ticket when he's operable and he's working you know and doing what he does 100 yards a game you know eight catches a game uh, that frees up somebody else. So that puts, you know, more of a, a cover aspect over St. Brown where, you know, he'll get targeted quite a bit, but it might free up a Laporta. You know, it, it could free up a Marvin Jones. It could free up, free up a Jameer Gibbs. And, and that's why St. Brown is so important to this offense. Not only as a motivator and somebody that works extra hard, but somebody that commands the respect of any defense in the NFL. And uh, I guess that's really it on St. Brown for, for this morning is, you know, we hope to see him back soon. Uh, Jamison Williams was the other injury yesterday. From what it sounds like, he just pulled up uh, first play uh, of practice with a hamstring issue. Uh, whether he actually pulled it or not, um, I, I have not seen you know the the exact diagnosis but just critically thinking about those types of injuries they're usually related to a lack of stretching and a lack of hydration and you get like a almost like a Charlie horse type feeling in the back of your hamstring and you get you know really bad cramp and tightness but we don't know we'll see uh, we'll see what happens my question for Jameson would be, Buddy, are you are you not high trading? I mean, you've been in the league now a couple of seasons, and you've been playing football for quite a long time. Uh, make sure you're hydrating. Make sure you're stretching. You know, especially for somebody that's got wheels like he does, you got to keep those uh, keep those money makers in shape. So, as we uh, work through preseason practice today, our focus, like I said, is going to be the defense. We focused on St. Brown and, and Brian Branch uh, and a few of the other players, you know, early off in the preseason, you know, coverage. But I want to focus more on, on some of these rookies like like Jack Campbell. I want to see how Levi is working. Um, Sam Laporta, hope to get to see more out of him in practice. So we're going to try to pay attention to those guys. We're really going to pay attention to this interior D-line. It'd be nice to see, you know, is Charles Harris really back to his, you know, 2021 um, type of play or type of level? Because uh, if he is or better, uh, that that's going to be a scary edge for any offense to have to handle. Is Aline McNeil really busting through the line and, and playing at a, a much higher pace now that he's trimmed down, you know, at more than 20 pounds and has gotten lighter on his feet? Um that's somebody I expect to make a huge leap in 2023. If he's really, you know, putting the work in this preseason, he can only get better. He had a lot of flashes last season. 
in the run stoppage game, but he just never really put it all together and had a complete season. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, he's just he didn't click with the defensive scheme, in my opinion, or he had too much, you know, too much going on around him with the, the new rookies that were not allowing him to be successful. Production versus stats. It's something that I pride, you know, myself on. It's something that I want to see, you know, from an NFL team, you know, that, that wants to work together. And this team wants to work together. There's there's a few phases uh, of, of watching it. Or, I'm sorry, there's a few keys in watching a defense and how they produce or are they just, you know, stat mongers. So last season, Hutchinson, Houston, you know, incredible season. They had a lot of sacks. But was it production? That's my question. And a lot of you aren't going to like that statement from me. And you're not going to like what I say next. But I could care less about stats. The only stats I care about are on the offensive side of the ball. And even then, you still want production. So let's say St. Brown doesn't get a catch all game long but he's taken up two defenders or one and a half defenders. Well, he's be, he's producing at a level where other guys on the team are able to get the glory. And that glory may come in, you know, touchdowns, catches, yards, whatever. Um, that, that production that he puts in, in one, pulling the defense away from other offensive players and allowing his, you know, teammates to get in, uh, you know, on on the game as far as stat-wise, um, is production. So if you're producing on the defense, it's a little bit different, right? Same same aspect. You you may not have all these sacks. You may not have all these, you know, fumbles or or TFLs or or whatever, uh, or interceptions. But if you're a lockdown corner, they're not going to throw to you. Right, so if they don't throw to you and they throw to the other side, and it's not as good as a, of a receiver, and the safety behind him is able to produce the interceptions or you know uh, pass breakups, well, he's producing in his you know in his position by locking down that receiver, so the other side can get the stats. It's still production; it's just a different type. On the off or on the defensive line. If you are holding up two gaps, I know they play in the gap and a half now, but if Lee McNeil is you know, basically covering up two gaps and they don't want to run through it, and they run the other way, and Hutchinson's getting all the sa- or getting all the tackles, that's production. Nobody in the right mind is going, going to want to run towards Hutch, but if the interior defensive line is forcing it that way and they're working inside out and they're forcing you know, the running back to have to take an, an, an outside run, or the quarterback is no longer able to run up the middle on a sneak or a draw or, or you know, quarterback sneak or whatever. Um, that's production. If you are producing within your position and you are forcing the ball to go somewhere where it doesn't want to go or somewhere where the defense is keyed in and they're expecting it and they're ready for it, that's production. You may not get the stat. And so who's this number one guy that I think of that did this in the preseason game? The Kamish, Kaminsky. That guy was in on so many plays and pushing the direction of the football to areas where it did not want to go. So you were seeing, you know, other players get in, like the Acora brothers, like Benito Jones. Uh, you know, these guys were able to elevate their game and have good production. Jack Campbell, Rodrigo both got their hats in on a lot of tackles and around the ball. It's because Kaminsky was able to force the pocket to move into a direction it did not want to go or collapsing the pocket and forcing the ball into a direction it didn't want to go. So that's what I'm looking for today. I hope that explained, you know, my view on on production versus stats. Um, So when you hear me refer to it this season, that's what I mean. And, you know, all the guys are producing. They're all working hard. They're all, you know, aiming for the same goal. And, you know, on defense, they want to shut you down they want to turn the ball over to the offense early and get off the field and the second term 
you know, that I use quite a bit is called the Hive. It's a defense that, that I used when I coached, and I just nicknamed it the Hive. But basically what I told my guys is you want to work together like, like bees, right? I mean, they the only thing that they do by themselves is they go out and get their pollen, uh, and then when they come back, they all work together. They work together to protect the queen, which would be the quarterback. I know Jared Goff's not a queen, but you get the idea. You get the, you know, analogy there. Um, you know, and on the defense, you know, they want to work together to corral these guys so that somebody can get free to make the play. Make the tackle, get the sack, get the TFL, get the interception, whatever it is. So if you're corralling these guys and you're working together unselfishly, and that's the key point, it has to be unselfish play from everybody on the defense working together. I think this defense has it. They showed it last season, the last half of the last half of the season, where they were working together. So beehive or hive defense is what I call it. Simply just means you guys need to work together to get the end result. We're not individuals; we're a team. And some teams aren't like that. You've got these, you know, guys that want their stats, they want their glory. You know, maybe they have you know, tickers in their contract where, you know, they get X amount of tackles or interceptions and they're more motivated by money because it, it elevates, you know, how much their contract is going to be worth at the end of the season. Well, let me tell you something. Big news flash here. You win a Super Bowl, you ain't going to have to worry about money. You get to the NFC or AFC championship, probably not going to have to worry about money. If you don't get to the playoffs because you're working as independents, you're probably going to have to worry about your job. So from that sense, work together. It only makes sense. And uh, and that's what I'm looking forward to today. So we're going to key in on are the guys working in a hive? Are they working together? How are some of the younger guys progressing? And uh, look at some of the, the old crowd that, you know, three years ago were, were rookies like Levi and see how he's doing, see how Aleem is really doing. And uh, if Hutch is in today, I know he's been sick for a couple of days. It's been quiet for Hutch. Um, you know, he's had some good production days in, in camp, but it's been really quiet around Hutch this, this offseason. And uh, I'm not sure why, you know. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, players of note yesterday, Cam Sutton got his hands dirty. Of course, Brian Branch is getting his hands dirty, you know, knocking balls out, making plays at the goal line. Uh, it's just practice. It's just preseason. It's fairly meaningless, but it is showing us that the work is paying off and that these guys are able to work, you know, as a unit, you know, a brand new unit, a gutted unit, uh, you know, just a season ago. So... All right, y'all have a wonderful day. Hope to see y'all out there at training camp. I've got uh, the new Villain Squad apparel shirt on today. Kicking grit in your eyes. You can find it at villainsquad.store. Please check us out. We're giving everybody that listens and follows and watches 15% off their entire purchase. We might have a bigger code going out here uh, to kick off uh, week one, and we might run it for two weeks. But right now, if you visit the store... It's 15% off, uh, I believe, when you buy two or if it's your entire cart. Either way, try Villain 15. And uh, if that doesn't work, you can always message us. But you should be able to get at least 15% off. They're amazing quality shirts. Uh, I love it. They feel great. I can tell you that you know, I normally wear an extra large. And I'm wearing an extra large and it fits just fine. They're all pre-shrunk, either 100% cotton or 50-50 polyester cotton blend, so they don't shrink a whole lot. Um, they're amazing quality. It helps support our channel, and, uh, and we're putting some, some messages out there for everybody. You know, this Lions team has been kicking grit in your eyes since 2021 when Dan Campbell came aboard and Brad Holmes. So that's our theme, is we are trying to, to create shirts that not, not just, you know, follow the Detroit Lions amazing main themes that, you know they put out at these press conferences and media sessions uh, but we'll also have some other you know gear that is just designed for our apparel line and we appreciate the support we definitely appreciate the feedback 
uh, you know, letting us know. If you have any issues at all, we're more than happy to exchange your item if you get it and you feel like it just doesn't fit right. You got seven days to, you know, contact us and, and you know, exchange the item for a bigger size. Uh, they are all custom, um, so it's, it's unique to us. And uh, we do everything within a matter of days. So if it takes longer than a week to get your shirt, I'd be surprised. So order early want to order for the Kansas City game and you want to hit the crowd and or hit the stadium in style and, and show that grit factor go visit our store villainsquad.store all right y'all have a good day